Nordstrom came to us, Neiman's came to us, Saks came to us. I think that there's this idea that when you have a brand and you sell into these stores, you've made it. No, 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 no. That is where the work begins. It's so much more than a beauty product. I would not have gone in this journey if it was not super mission driven. It's everything. Sometimes people go into calling in the next stage of their life with like this intentional list. I didn't know the container it would come in, but I knew the energy that I wanted to invoke. There's so many entrepreneurs waking up to just the energetic connection to our businesses, but mm -hmm. we don't have to totally abandon the very real and necessary structure side. You cannot. Structure and hard skills are vital. The better you get at those hard skills, the larger the container becomes and the bigger the vision and business can be. Chase, welcome to Powerhouse Women. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so delighted to have this conversation. We got to meet at a mutual friends event yeah. just recently. And there was a moment, there were several moments where you were on stage and just telling your story. And we're going to get all into that, that I was like, I number one, want to be her friend. Yay. <laughs> I number two, really want to have her on the podcast. So people know you if they if they don't know you already the world knows you as the founder of Kipper's Beauty how do you describe this beautiful business creation that you have created ecstatic beauty mm say more about that so kipper's is luxury high performance skincare with a gentle footprint we are leaping bunny certified vegan we're b corp certified the whole line is clinically tested it's very right brain left brain in the sense that you know, I think a lot of the times when people think about skincare and personal care, they think about like a doctor brand or something really clinical, which is amazing because you're going to get great efficacy and elegant wear. But if you look at those ingredients, <laughs> it's not is it's not great, you know. And then on the flip side, there's a lot of products in the world that are very natural and they smell nice and they feel nice and they might come from amazing places. But if you want that elegant wear, if you want results, if you want really the best of both worlds, it's really this combination of the two. And if you really stop to think about it, since I know this audience likes kind of going a little deeper, if you really stop to think about it, you know, science is the, it's one side of the same coin as spirituality. Mm -hmm. So if you can think of science as something where, you know, it has to be observable, it has to be measurable, it has to be repeatable. Spirituality is very much about your experience of the numinous and your experience of the natural world. Science is measuring and observing and hoping to repeat the natural world. Spirituality is really about you know, your experience of the moment, your experience of yourself, your experience of your beauty and the beauty that is our lives. And so I wanted that to inform not just, of course, our branding, but our sourcing decisions, our formulation decisions. And so if you look at the company and not just what we do, but how we do what we do, there's a lot of work that goes into, um, you know, formulating things so that they're really gentle for skin, but very effective. We actually run into something really funny recently. We're launching in another country. We're, you know, we're based in the United States, but we're sold in a over I think a dozen markets globally now and we're launching yet another one so I'm very excited about that and one of our very first products are beauty elixirs which are these amazing you know beauty oils actually have to be registered as drugs in this <gasps> oh, stop. Market. really because, because the efficacy of the product because mm -hmm. they're so potent and wow. yet they're so gentle yeah and so I think that there's this misunderstanding in culture in the industry mm -hmm. that gentleness isn't powerful. And yet, if you think of the Grand Canyon, I mean, that was carved over centuries, millennia even, of wind and water simply blowing and flowing, you know? Yes. So it's, wow. we should not underestimate the power of gentleness. Yeah. Okay, that was like one of the things that immediately drew me in and hearing about your philosophy and hearing about your 
I could just feel the depth to you as like the one to birth this creation. And there was this moment where someone was asking you like a beautiful question about what steps we should follow in our in our skincare routine. And do you yes. remember what you yes. said to that? Will you share? I don't remember what I said to that. I can give you, you a ritual, said, but go on. Well, what I okay, what I love that you said, I'm like, you can't you read my mind right now? Oh, no. <laughs> what you said, and this was the moment where I was like, oh, wow, I want to talk to her. I want to know the story behind that. You didn't give, you didn't actually give the steps of the products you should use in what order. What you first said was with each step of your skincare routine, say something nice about yourself. Yes. I could tell at that moment, there's so like, it's so much more than a beauty product and a movement. How much has that influenced the company and the culture you've created? It's everything. I would not have gone in this journey if it was not super mission driven. And I think people, someone listening right now is rolling their eyes like, oh yeah, give yourself an honest compliment. You know, I can hear them. (laughs) Um, We see you. We see you. It's neuroscience. (laughs) It is literally foundational neuroscience because neurons that fire together, wire together. Your skin and your nervous system evolve from the same epithelial cells. So there is this inextricable relationship between your nervous system and your skin. And you see this in a number of different ways, but you see this in how bliss, the touch can actually modulate stress response. Mm -hmm. You see this in our need, like our emotional need for hugs, you know, and like connection and touch. You see this in uh, blood pressure regulation. You see this in your immune system. Part of your immune system is in your skin. There's this really close relationship between your immune system and your nervous system. I mean, there are so many different relationships between our skin, our nervous system, and also our psychology and how we care for ourselves and treat ourselves. So this is our little, this is a little, and if you think about it, if you are in the mirror doing your ritual, your cleansing, moisturizing, putting your SPF on, your masks, whatever you're doing. And instead of standing there trying to tear yourself apart, as so many of us can do, I'm I'm guilty at times too, like, oh, this is wrong and this is wrong. Well, what happens if you stop that and you start looking for what's right? And then you start this process of being in discovery of your beauty, no matter what day it is, you know? And, and I know there's this big you know, conversation right now about aging as a privilege and, you know, oh, what is that amazing woman who's online? I don't think this is where you were going, but even just if we look at what a, what a wave it made when Pamela Anderson showed up to the, Mm -hmm. the event, the red carpet event with bare face, no makeup. And she was like, oh, I just didn't even think this would be a thing. It's just so much more of a conversation. Well, especially for her, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think in her earlier years, she had such a cultivated, curated, uh, heavily articulated presentation. Yes. You know, and I think for many of us, depending on your age, there was a demand for that, you know, and thankfully as we've aged and also evolved, that's starting to shift. Yeah. You know, I love that. So I am so curious to hear, and I actually love that we saved this. We we didn't even have like a friend first date. I was like, come on the podcast and let's get to know each other that way. Because that's just very much my speed. That's it. That's all you need to know. But So I don't actually know the origin story of what inspired you to start Kippers in the first place. I know it's not your first business, but what what was it specifically about skincare, about these products that you knew it had to exist? Okay, so... It was less about, so I didn't initially know it was skincare. And when I was living in Los Angeles, I had my first business, but I was also working in art and entertainment. Yeah. And that felt very bifurcated to me. And so when I moved to Arizona to be with my now husband um, 14 years ago, (laughs) I knew I wanted to do something with women and wellness. I knew I wanted to do something Uh, having to do with the environment and our relationship to the environment Mm -hmm. because we oftentimes forget that we are nature, you know, and I don't know that you can know soul without actually acknowledging that. Yeah. We are part of nature. I I think people forget that what we do to ourselves, we do to the planet Mm -hmm. and vice versa. So I was trying to figure out how could that become in the world? 
Because ideas are great, textbooks are great, but until you actually put it into action, like what's the point, mm. you know? And mm -hmm. then I think entrepreneurship is on the one hand, a incredible way to problem solve, like problem solving is just the best ever. Mm -hmm. It is also an initiatory journey, which I, I'm sure we'll talk about in a bit, but I didn't know how it was going to come together. I'm like, how does ecofeminism become in the world? Like, where does that need to live? And it was a lot of meditation and a lot of ritual. And actually, I did not be, I think sometimes people go into calling in the next stage of their life with like this intentional list. Yes. I didn't know the list. I knew the energy I wanted. So I wrote down the energy. I didn't know the the container it would come in, Ooh, I but I knew this. the but I knew the energy that I wanted to invoke. And about two weeks later, the early stirrings of it started to arrive. Yeah. And let me backtrack a second. I lived in LA for almost ten years, and I don't know if you follow. I think his name. I think it was Robert McKee who said this, but he talks about like California conversations, mm. which are these like inappropriately <laughs> intimate conversations you have with people on podcasts. Just kidding. Okay, at I've not coffee heard shops. This. I was going to say, <laughs> okay. but I I need to know. It sounds like my yeah. vibe. <laughs> so well, you know, I think um, I think that it's changed. I don't recommend them. <laughs> okay, we're talking about different conversations. I'm, yeah, we're I talking think. California. Car I, I yeah. just think that like yeah. when you're in California, when I was living in LA, if you wanted to network, you could go to AA. You could go to Starbucks. Sure. You could go yeah. to group therapy. You could go to a writing class or an acting class. Like there were just certain sort of communities that you yeah. could go to where you would meet these interesting people and you would end up having this sort of false sense of intimacy because mm -hmm. you could find this like inroad of humanity to one another, yes. which is beautiful to a degree. And so I, when I first came here, I, I still had that culture with me of like, I can talk to anyone. And that just doesn't really, it's ill-advised. <laughs> it's just not advised. You, you know, I could have been Jeffrey Dahmer. You never you know. You just don't know. You just don't know. But I ended up sitting next to the, this man, these two guys at a cafe out here who were talking about starting a skincare brand. And I just kind of was like listening and I you know, was like asking questions and I was like, oh, I, maybe I could help you with this, you know, yeah. and kind of like insinuated myself into it. And I was, you know, it is such a wacky story. You know, they had a lab in San Diego. My husband's like, you want to drive to San Diego? I'm like, they live in this nice neighborhood. He's married with kids. Like <laughs> you can't be too much of a psycho, you know? And so I like went into the lab with him a couple of times and I was sitting there and I was listening to the chemist and uh, everything they were talking about, I said to them, I was like, is this organic chemistry? Because I suffered through that class. Right. You're like, this is giving me flashbacks. This is giving me literal <laughs> flashbacks I, or what it triggered. I'm feeling triggered. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. And so the chemist is like, yes, why it is organic chemistry. All cosmetic chemistry is, orga you know, organic chemistry. And I was like, I took this class. <laughs> I yeah. suffered. And then I found a lab out here and I met with the lead chemist there and she introduced me to a couple formulator programs and I decided to go to formulators training. Mm -hmm. And I did one for green, you know, for green, clean cosmetics. I did one for conventional cosmetics. I did one that really looked at the organic chemistry behind it, which I hope I've forgotten all of it by now. <laughs> and just shake that right yeah, off. Yeah, just shake that right off. And I just started like studying it. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is really interesting because I really love skincare. Like yeah. I really love beauty. But most of what we call beauty in from like an industry and market perspective is actually glamour. Mm. Um, there's a difference between beauty and glamour and there's nothing wrong with either. Not Neither is bad. They just serve different purposes. Mm -hmm. You, you want to eat... You don't really want to eat chocolate cake for breakfast. You want like your tofu scramble or eggs or whatever you're going to eat. You want something su of substance. Yeah. Glamour is really about, you know, how you present yourself. It's it's about casting a glamour. It's about a moment that you're mm -hmm. creating. It's not meant to transcend your life and time. Sure. You know. Makes sense. It's what queens use to yeah. retain power and command a room and yeah. help people pay attention to them and know that they're the ones in charge. Um, not entirely that, but in part that. Um, and beauty is something that we experience. Mm -hmm. You could be sitting in your pajamas picking your nose and you're still going to have the ability to feel and find beauty 
in yourself and in the world. And I think that's an important distinction because we are all vessels of beauty should we choose to attune to it. And so I kind of was just through this process was finding my way of what could possibly be, what could possibly be. And one of my longtime friends from literally when I was like eight years old, had a lab, a massive, massive lab. And so I had some built-in mentorship and I was like, you know, my other business was still running at the time. I had an education company and I just, I had started a blog and I was like, you know, I think I'm going to go for it. And then I found a designer, literally fresh out of design school and found packaging and it just all kind of started rolling. And then literally like we, so when we first launched in 2011, um, we actually first sold to physicians in their offices. Really? We were distributed to doctor's offices and distributorships are interesting. Mm. I really did not understand marketing mm. at all, <laughs> like at all. And I, <laughs> I didn't understand that having Having a company like this, having a brand is how you operate the brand is what the marketing is. It's how you communicate. It's how you plan. It's how you educate. It's right. It's all these things. And I really didn't understand it. My fantasy was, can I just source beautiful ingredients and make skincare? Because at this time I was like, really on the hunt for beautiful materials. So like Mm -hmm. prickly pear. You can buy it from Morocco, but if you know what a prickly pear is, if you it's a precarious fruit. And yeah. I literally mean precarious. Like it will yeah. I don't know if you know this, it can like give you bad bacterial infections. No. They're really I don't know how this is a traditional item, but it is. And you can get it from Morocco, but what you learn is that the further away an operation is, the less familiarity you have with the culture of those operations. So like if you're married, think about what your house looks like when you know your in-laws are coming over. Yeah. Versus what your house looks like on an average day. Right. They're different. Don't spill my secrets like this. Yes. <laughs> but they're different. and Very different. And so mm-hmm. all this. And so yeah. you're saying like the operation of where you were starting to learn you're sourcing these ingredients from, mm-hmm. the further away they are from like you being able to have your Vet finger them. on the pulse of. Or somebody who has a yes. vested interest in yeah. them being well, mm-hmm. good stewards of land and people. Right. You know, right. because I feel like I kind of got off, got on a segue there, but um the minute you start realizing what goes into making a product, mm-hmm. you cannot, I can't sleep at night. Yes. I couldn't sleep at yeah. night knowing what goes into a product and not having some level of responsibility for that. Yeah. It will be imperfect. I guarantee you as much work as we do to keep our supply chain ethical and compliant to our standards, I absolutely guarantee you there is something happening in our supply chain right now that if I knew about it would probably kill me. Yeah. And at the same time, we, our job is to seek it out. Our job is, you know, and half my family is in West Virginia and a lot of us are farmers. And so I know farms quite well. And farming is one of the things that just drives me nuts right now is there's a lot of like fairy tale stories about Mm, farms like the american farmer i'm from the midwest so that life was very much like had Mm -hmm. had its own energy to it but yeah so much more i think when it's romanticized is what bothers me yeah because it's really hard work it's really important work it's sacred work it's i mean if you meet great farmers they're basically psychic it can be sunny outside and they'll say "Eh, it's gonna rain today and you're gonna be like what? <laughs> you know? And then surely enough around 2 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> it's a torrential, it you know, down for it. Here it comes. So I think that there's this relationship to land and the people who care for the land yeah. that is very dear to me. And then at the same time that gets balanced with science. Like how can we deliver the result, the promise of what we're telling you we're selling you? Mm-hmm. Because I hate how, and I mean hate, I hate how much misinformation there is in marketing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like 
ignorant commentary that sounds clippy, you know, quippy in marketing that just we are all now dumber for having heard. It drives me nuts, but yeah, you know, especially in the beauty industry, I would imagine. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. here's what I love about your story because we're kind of centering on something that when we were chatting beforehand, you were like, this is something I am really passionate about, which you talked about tapping into the feeling. You had the energy of this vision that you were bringing to life. I want to circle back eventually to like how you Sorry, utilize rituals. No, this is why yeah. I'm here. I'm the linear friend. I will <laughs> land this plane. Okay. You just ride with me. I will just ride. I've Go got ahead. you, girl. Thank because you. Because there's so much gold in what you're sharing. And I really want to make sure people hear it. But you're balancing this very energetic, very spiritual connection to your business. Mm -hmm. But then I heard you say you had to go out there and learn about supply chain mm -hmm. marketing. You went and took formulating classes. Like talk a little bit about that. I think where manifestation and like the energy around business goes wrong is that we don't also balance it kind of like how you so beautifully said science and spirituality. Yep. It is. It's like the actual tangible hard skills yep. with a very, and it sounds like you also do. I have a very energetic spiritual connection to the business. Business, but I can't just be in that mode nope. all day long. Nope. I mean, there's a part of me that would like to be. I would love to be just <laughs> meditating. I know, right? On and a in my zen den all day. <laughs> Literally. Um, it doesn't work though. And and really what I think I've come to realize is, is that if you, and actually if you think of the spiritual practices, whether you're talking about paganism or alchemy or tarot, you, you pick, there is still a system. There's still a container for this to work in, right? Yes. You don't go out and light gasoline on fire. You run it through an engine where combustion can happen and yes. you have movement. And so structure and hard skills are vital. And the better you get at those hard skills, the larger the container becomes and the bigger the vision in business can be. Yeah. And so the, it's really, it's both. It, and it's kind of, it's very figure eighty. It's like very ebb and flow. You kind of go far enough into the spiritual realm and all of a sudden it's like, well, what's your container? Because any practitioner worth their salt knows that if you're going to cast something mm -hmm. in the realm of ritual, you are responsible for what happens in the space. You're responsible mm -hmm. for grounding it. Mm -hmm. You're responsible mm -hmm. for keeping yourself and everyone else safe if you are the priestess of the space. And if you're in a circle, then we kind of have to have each other's backs and da, 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 da. And that applies in business as well. So the same way that you have ritual housekeeping in the, co in the realm of a business you have to have your licenses, you know, filed. You have to make sure you're paying your taxes. You need your bookkeeping done impeccably. It is the same as cleaning your home before you invite people over. You know, it's yeah. same, same, just different arena. Yes. And I love how I'd never heard someone put it in that way. Just the, the real balance, because we love the woo around here. Absolutely. But nothing, even with this podcast that we're filming right now, happens without a very clear system very clearly to find roles behind it Processes. and the team and all of those things. And I think we're in this interesting time where there's so many, even entrepreneurs waking up to just the energetic connection to our businesses, but mm -hmm. we don't have to totally abandon the very real and necessary structure side. You cannot. That comes with it. It's so true. I do want to hear though. I'm like, let's go woo since we're talking about this because you've mentioned meditation, you've mentioned rituals. How how much is that a part of the way that you are now scaling your company? Has it always been a part of this vision for you? <laughs> I have a complicated relationship with this <laughs> just because like, I think if you have, I think that if you have a practice, you struggle with it. I think yeah. sometimes it's easier than others. Uh, amen. Probably, you know, I think it's like a relationship, right? It's yeah. a relationship with yourself. It's the relationship with the divine. My daily practice is some version of reading, writing, meditating, moving, praying. Mm -hmm. It's some version of that on a regular daily basis. The movement piece is harder for me depending on the day, but movement can be stretching. It can be walking. It can be going to the pool. It can be going to the gym. It can be going to yoga class. It can be Pilates. It can be a number of things, but you know, that's probably the toughest one for me sitting on a lily pad and meditating. Not hard. Love that. Um, journaling. <laughs> love that. Not hard. Um, 
vital. I think starting a business, and I kind of knew this going into this because it wasn't my first rodeo, but um, starting a business is signing up for a hero's a hero's journey, a heroine's journey. It's an initiation. It really is. You are going mm-hmm. to confront your limitations. You're going to confront other people's limitations. You're going to confront your dreams, you know, like th- things that you hoped for that arrive and unsurprisingly, it's like, okay, this is not what I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. Daily. Or, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it can be, I think it depends on the season. I think, I also think too, that depending on like the baggage you kind of bring, we all have it, depending on the baggage you bring to the conversation and to the endeavor, it is going to color what you encounter, Mm -hmm. you know, like if you don't have this sort of, uh, interior conditions to be, uh, triggered in a certain way, it's just going to like float on by. But if you are, if, if you kind of have a a tough issue with like relating to different types of people or, Oh God, my list of challenges is so long, (laughs) (laughs) you know, or like a sense of, um, worthiness where, you know, cause people are like, Oh, the business is a, your baby. And it's like, no, it isn't. <laughs> right. No, it isn't. If I ignore right. it for two days and I have a weekend, it's not going to die. You know, whereas if you had a child, it, it would. And and I want to really honor the distinction between the two for so many different reasons. Right. 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 But it it is an initiatory path. And I really hope I don't I honestly don't know how atheists do it. I don't know how people who don't believe in a divine co-creative presence have companies like I really don't get it. But I'm not going to solve that today. Like for me, I know when I have encountered challenges, I, I have to center, I have to, and by the way, challenge is not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I think like, I think people, you know, heavy, what is it? Heavy weighs the head that wears the crown, you know, when really amazing things happen, that's a different type of stress, you know, because wild things can go one direction, wild things can go, I mean, they're both stressful in very different ways. Mm. And then and I can't remember the name of the, the, of the myth, but Michael Mead tells this amazing story about like how this, like, it, you know, this bad thing happens and the wise person on the path is like, maybe, <laughs> you know, you don't know what the, what you think yeah. is a bad thing could actually be like this insane blessing in yes. disguise. Yeah. And you may not ever know it, but you might see it in hindsight. And mm-hmm. then these like amazing things that happen for you and to you, you're like, mm-hmm. I have questions about this. Yes. You know, it yeah. may not be what you thought it was. And, it, you know, and so there's a duality to all of it that yeah, I'm fascinated by. You know, I have a, a good friend who the way she says it is everything is medicine. Mm. The good, the challenges that come with that the things that we might label something other than good and the way that it forces us to rise and meet ourselves Mm -hmm. newly. Mm -hmm. The longer you've been in this journey, and I love how you said it, it really is signing up for a heroine's journey. The longer you realize, I actually, I'm here to grow me. And then this beautiful creation that is like the overflow of that is just the shiny thing on the outside that people can see. And sometimes it's not that shiny, but I'm here for my own evolution. Yeah. I mean, I think that can also be true of a career. Yeah. Agreed. You you know, like for physicians and there is a book, I haven't read it, so I, I cannot recommend or not recommend it, but there is a book called, I think the heroine's journey. I don't know if it's work related or not, but I think it's meant as sort of a more feminine answer to Joseph Campbell's, sure, you know, hero's yeah. journey. So yeah. I, I think I, I haven't read it yet. Okay, well, maybe we'll have to like look we'll into, have to that. Look into that. I'm like, that sounds like it would really speak yeah. to me right now. Totally. I, I mean, love that. And then there's also the piece of this where there's ideas of what it means to be feminine mm-hmm. and embody your womanhood. Totally. And I have a bit of a an allergy, I think, to how we collectively are talking about feminine ambition and desire for uh, not counterdependence, but independence and interdependence. You know, I think we want to make it, a, you know, a boss babe, 
yeah. type thing. And yeah. it's like, can I just be feeling myself and using my skills and yes. building something? It is. I, I actually am. I think about this a lot because, and you and I are in similar age demographic. Mm -hmm. I look at even my upbringing and I was very much the gen first generation of women. If I think about parents and grandparents where I, I just was, there were different things modeled to me mm -hmm. almost to the extent that I can see like in my twenties, like my ambition really felt like it was coming from this place of proving very driven by like wanting to be that boss and like almost proving my I can, worth. Boys can do it. Myself. I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And not, I don't, I, I think that that is even medicine in itself, but coming to this place of realizing the strength in the more feminine, if we want to like use mm -hmm. that that context of masculine and feminine energies, realizing that the things that have actually driven my success, if you want to call it that, are the things that are like my intuition, my deep need for connection, mm -hmm. the things that have nothing to do with me proving myself through my actions. Totally. I feel like proving yourself is like this ego carrot that pushes you way off course. Mm -hmm. Big time. So well said. Like big time. I And I think... It's such a trap, you know, and I think when you have like a, I think when you have a brand, which could really be anything, I think sometimes you have, I at least had a vision for how I wanted it to live in the world, mm -hmm. you know, how I want it to thrive in the world. And I think what I thought would create thriving five years ago is not what I understand today. It's not what I know today. And what and do you I think know today? Well, well how know, has that changed? Yeah, I think that I think that when and there's a lot of things that inform this, but I think that I had this idea that, you know, well, so first of all, our our primary distribution came to us for the most part. Nordstrom came to us, Neiman's came to us, Saks came to us, which was very was extraordinary and very flattering and at the same time um i did not at the beginning of it fully understand what the responsibility was in partnering with them as a company as a brand that sells to these larger retailers we have to be the motor in this we have to be what generates the awareness we have to be what generates the interest the desire the knowledge of the products and drive traffic into these locations. Yes, it is a partnership. However, I think that there's this idea that when you have a brand and you sell into these stores, you've made it. No, 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 no. That is where the work begins. That is truly like the beginning of an entire different job that mm -hmm. you've just taken on and a responsibility and partnership. Right. And I think that one of the big mistakes that I made early on in having the company and the brand was that I did not center the need of the brand and the company to have its own direct voice with its own direct community. Mm. We did to a degree, but I don't think it was nearly as intentional as it needed to be. Right. It wasn't structured. It wasn't consistent. Frankly, we just needed to sing our song louder. Yes. And there's a way yeah. to, there's a way of doing that. You know, there's different levers you pull to do mm -hmm. that. And so that's been a huge learning for me. Yeah. And I, I love that you pull back the curtain on something that is to be celebrated. Such an incredible opportunity to align with these brands, but also to share the real look behind the scenes of the new responsibilities that puts on you, on your team. It reminds me almost of like when people talk about getting a publishing contract for a book, mm -hmm. thinking that the publisher then is going to push your book out there, but it's you're just as responsible, if not now more, because mm -hmm. they're expecting you to perform and to to sell through. So I love that. I love that view and that take. And I think I just want to kind of like start to tie this with a beautiful bow and come back to the heart of the product mm -hmm. because... I, I, first of all, love product. I love Thank you. the actual beauty industry now that I know the distinction that you so beautifully shared. And 
the intention behind every single moment that you put into your products is mm-hmm. really inspiring. It actually makes, as a consumer, it has me connect so much more deeply with the brand. What are you most proud of? If this is an opportunity, let's just say like you've got the floor now to share the story, like the true heart of Kipris. Yeah. What is that like 30 second to a minute story that like you want to shout from the rooftops? Oh man, <laughs> no pressure. No pressure whatsoever. No, no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> um, I am I am really proud that what we offer both in the form of a product and form of an idea is authentic, that it's true, that it's real, that we have done the work of integrating. I think, look, like anytime you have a organization, whether it's like an NGO or a company or a nonprofit or whatever it may be, and they have this beautiful, beautiful intent to make a certain impact in the world, there's a very, there's a shadow to that. And there's a disowned aspect to that. And I am proud of the fact that we integrate the imperfections of the effort into what we do. I am proud of the fact that we do the work even, you know, to, you know, have a traceable supply chain, to have relationships with who we can have relationships with. I feel very good that when someone purchases from us, they are going to get beautiful results and that they are going to be able to use beauty from beauty. Because so often people are very price conscious for reason. Right. right. But if you are if you feel like you're getting something for nothing, somebody else is paying for it. You may right. not be paying for it, but right. someone's paying for it. And so I just am very proud of the albeit imperfect, but the integrity with which we do what we do. Yes. And you feel it. You feel it even in the application of product on your skin. You feel it in the heart of like you, hearing your story. So for people who maybe are not familiar with the brand, where can they shop? Where can they find it? Um, well, you can find us online. We have a lovely website. We have a slew of partners. So if you have a favorite place to shop, we have a, a, a partner list. Um, we are also in some beautiful spas across the United States some and of my Mexico. Favorites. <laughs> yes. If you need yeah. an excuse for a spa day. It's yes. market research. Literally, literally. <laughs> but also rest is very important part of the process. Absolutely. So, you know, it's Still like, work. I heard this on a podcast. Yeah, I must go must and be immediately real. book a spa day. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can find us online. We actually created a code for your community. Yes. And I'm so grateful for that. We're going to put it in the show notes, but okay, I'll have you share perfect. it here so too. You can use code powerhouse women. All one word. All one word. Yep. Uh, for $20 towards your first order yeah. on our website. And I don't want to open up a whole can of worms, but I've actually been loving learning about the different product options because I feel like you've also really simplified. So like your beautiful beauty elixirs, there's kind Mm -hmm. of like one for every type of skin Mm -hmm. and is the best place to like learn and do the research on the website. Is that the best place? We got you covered. Okay, great. Tell me. You can take a discovery quiz which oh, is yay. amazing. Quiz. You can also uh, email us. You can reach out to us and one of our estheticians will create a ritual for you. Stop. Really? Mm-hmm. Talk about over and above. <laughs> and just like the love with which is really infused into everything that you do. That's such a perfect example of. I love we that. We certainly try. <laughs> I love it. Thank okay, you. So my favorite question to really end on and like really tie together this beautiful story and it's really an opportunity for everyone listening and for you to pause and acknowledge yourself give an honest compliment oh boy we just call it a powerhouse moment anything big or small that right now in this moment first thing that comes to mind that you're like I actually I want to celebrate myself for that I am so proud of the challenges that we have overcome like so proud. I can't talk about everything publicly, but COVID was crazy. And I think back on how I handled, how the team handled, how we handled collectively all of those challenges. And no, we didn't do perfectly, but we did, we're still standing. We're doing really well. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about the future. And I just feel like, man, we didn't, there's so many businesses that that were good businesses 
that did not make it to the Mm -hmm. other side and they break my heart. Mm -hmm. They do. And I'm just really proud of us for holding in our integrity, being good partners to our partners and, you know, continuing to grow the vision that is Kipris and, you know, expand into the world. And, you know, we like to call our partnerships a global constellation of love that is so beautiful. <laughs> well, we have very special partners around the world and, yeah. and counting. And so I'm really proud of them. I'm really proud of us. I'm very proud of the community. And I just, I look back at that path and I'm just like, wow, I can't believe we've navigated that. So you're alive. We're alive <laughs> and thriving. And here we go. Uh. Well, this has been just like such a delight. Great first friend date. Great first yeah. friend date. I mean, I feel like I talked the whole time though. That's what we always say. It's a podcast. You're supposed to. <laughs> You're supposed to. And I feel like, again, I was so moved by that simple suggestion of when you're in the mirror, putting on your creams, your potions, your lotions, when you're in your daily ritual, giving yourself that honest compliment with every step. And I feel like that's such a beautiful way to end. Like as you press pause and, or before you move on with your day and move on to the next podcast, just pause and take five seconds right now. Give yourself an honest compliment. Be your bestie. It's neuroscience. Literally. It's, it's acknowledging your beauty. It's science. So that's all, that's all we've got for you. Just know it's science. Yep. Chase, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me.